All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for daily videos on everything going on in the cryptocurrency space. And before we begin, let me clear up a rumor that's been going on about Altcoin Daily. Real quick, uh, to address this rumor, I am not George Clooney. I am not George Clooney, and I hope I've been clear with that. So anyways, today I want to continue our education on cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And as I told you in our video from the other day, just because the market is down, do not shy away. Double down on your interest in cryptocurrency. It's going to pay off. It's the smartest and most disciplined investors that come next bull run. They will be the most victorious. And the next bull run after that, and the bull run after that. This is a journey, my friends. Adoption will come within five to ten years, I think. Did you hear that? I think adoption will come within the next five to ten years. So as cryptocurrency enthusiasts and investors, the question is this. What's the best way for adoption to occur? What's the best way to spread something like wildfire? And I think one of the most tried and tested and true methods to help adoption to spur a change is word of mouth. Word of mouth. I mean, you probably bought your first Bitcoin because somebody told you about it. You probably bought your first altcoin because somebody told you about it. So let me ask you a question. I want to know in the comments, what is the first altcoin somebody told you about? This will be interesting because for me, I was in an Uber and my Uber driver, I was going to, I think I was going to the Hollywood Improv in Los Angeles with a friend and the Uber driver started telling us about Firecoin. And he told, he told me that since he bought Firecoin, it 3X'd and he recommended that I buy Firecoin. So <laughs> I never ended up buying Firecoin. Uh, but it did pique my interest in cryptocurrency. And it's our job to talk about Bitcoin and altcoins when we're out in public. It's a great, interesting thing you can talk about at parties, especially if you have something to say. And that's what I want to do today. I want to give you the words so that when somebody asks you why crypto is good, you'll, you'll have the words, you can generate the conversation and get other people interested as well as, you know, just being an interesting person yourself. So uh, let's start here. I thought this was a great question asked yesterday on the subreddit R Cryptocurrency. And this person asked, what does humanity gain from this technology? And the community responded, a whole lot of great answers. I color cord I'm going to leave a comment or I'm going to leave a uh, the link to this uh, article, to this post in the uh, description, because it's interesting to review what other people say is the value in uh, blockchain and crypto. But I highlighted some stuff, I color-coded some answers, and we're going to expand on these answers today. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. And if at any point you find value in today's video, hit the like button. We're still a small channel, but every single like helps us grow. We're trying to provide you with a lot of value with our daily crypto content. So this is pretty informal. Uh, let's just start off with this one, I guess, the first one. Uh, this person asks, uh, to answer the question, uh, what does humanity gain from blockchain and cryptocurrency technology? This person says, when you really boil it down, it's about trust. We don't know or trust one another. And if we wanted to do a financial transaction, we use third parties that each of us trusts to make that happen. If our third parties don't trust one another, they're going to use another layer of third parties to hand off the transaction to. This goes on until the two parties directly trust one another. This adds huge cost and delay to these transactions. So the, the loser is us in our current system where it's longer uh, delayed for transactions, bigger cost. So blockchain technology wipes away all the layers of third parties and allows you and I to transact directly and trust each other. We need to trust in an algorithm that we can see all the facts of. And that's what Bitcoin is. That's what a lot of altcoins are. I mean, that's what blockchain technology is. So it's cheaper and faster. For society, it makes transactions more efficient. The efficiency improves total economic output because there is less of a break on making transactions. 
On average, things will get better for us. Woo! If I said that to a lady at a party, guaranteed she'd be into me. But uh, to expand on this, you know, I see this. I see a future where our money isn't held hostage by these centralized authorities. And I'm talking about a world where companies like PayPal can't hold on to your money for an indefinite amount of time, or companies like Western Union can't, you know, charge you an arm and a leg to send your money to somebody. Because now we have Bitcoin, and now we have cryptocurrency, and now we can send money instantaneously for a fraction of a penny. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's something like being able to send money to different people, actually being able to send uh, crypto to different countries. That's something that Ripple is doing. That's something that uh, Stellar Lumen is doing and uh, Ripple XRP. So there are altcoins that are making this possible for everyday use. And we see the uh, partnerships that uh, S uh, Ripple is making all the time. We see the partnerships and the actual use that Stellar is getting all the time. And the general public, they're not really familiar with this stuff yet. Probably five years from now, you know, this might be a staple in everyday life and the general public will just accept it because it's gonna be the easiest thing for them to use. Anyways, let's continue. I guess, oh yeah, I think there was one part, one more part of this yellow I wanted to read. No, okay. Next up is purple. Um, what can blockchain technology actually do? Well, the ability to microtransact, giving a bank account and in turn economy to the majority of that that do not have one available to them. So basically what this person's talking about, Shark Mark, is... Uh, Banking the unbanked. I mean, thinking about people in third world countries uh, or even second world countries, a lot of them, although they all have smartphones, they don't have access to a bank. So it's very difficult for them to save money. So with cryptocurrencies like Cardano uh, or I'll say it, even Electronium or Omise Go, it's these altcoins in these companies that see a huge market in people who at the moment don't have a way to store money, to save money, to transact money. They see a huge market and they're going to try and help those people get banked and be able to do all those things. That's a huge, huge thing. It's something that needs to happen. There's a need. And, uh, you know, that's a use case. That's uh, actual value that blockchain and crypto can provide. Yeah, I think that would kill at a party. Okay, what's next? This is interesting. It provides proof of existence to people who may otherwise have no means to uniquely identify themselves. Uh, if you have no passport, no birth certificate, and live in a region where those things are hard to come by, uh, officially, a private slash public key pair you can use for message signing is amazing. amazing. You can register your existence in the blockchain which then potentially gives you the opportunity to do all of those things. So that's interesting. You know, it gives you proof of existence. So right now, if I was dropped off in a random spot, a random place in this huge earth, <laughs> I probably couldn't survive, you know. I live in uh, the city now. Uh, but, you know, if I had, uh, you know, access to uh, my phone when I got dropped off and I had Bitcoin and other altcoins and cryptocurrency was now... Uh, accepted in places, all of a sudden I'd be able to get along in any part of the world. And this would really, you know, take the world and the globe to the you know, next level of all of us being one people of Earth. Spacey stuff. Okay. This is uh, something I kind of want to dive into. Actually, no, let's hit, up, uh, let's hit up this one first. So this person said Lambo. What's the use case? What's the value? Uh, for humanity, Lambo. And while I didn't appreciate that answer, I actually want to talk to you about one of the coolest things I like to mention to my friends when they ask me what's the use case, and that is self-driving cars. And specifically with uh, cryptocurrencies like IOTA or uh, the Internet of Things in general, that's the idea that in the future, all of your appliances and all of your things will be able to communicate with each other, including self-driving cars cars and actually iota it's actually a tangle which is similar to a blockchain but let's not get too complicated the question is how is crypto going to make self-driving cars possible well in the future self-driving cars are going to need to talk to each other uh so they don't crash so they know what to do they know how to you know 
cars can ride next to each other. They're going to need to talk to each other. And to do this, they're going to need to pay each other with microtransactions of cryptocurrency. So let me give you an example. Two self-drive, and I've used this example before, two self-driving cars both want to cross a four-way intersection. Which one goes first? Well, with blockchain technology, one car can pay the other car instantaneously a micro amount of cryptocurrency so that they will be able to go first. And every single time these cars talk to each other and pay each other, uh, it will get stored on the blockchain, recorded forever, uh, with no possibility of like a clawback or anything. Um, and I actually think a few different car companies are already trying to uh, implement this. I know Tesla, huge on this, big fan of Tesla. I uh, watched him on Friday, on, or I watched uh, Elon Musk on Friday on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. It's on YouTube. I highly recommend you check out uh Elon Musk on the Joe Rogan experience. Great interview. Let's continue. Do you guys like videos like this where we just kind of chat about use case? I think it's good to do once in a while. Okay, let's talk about the blue and then we're going to finish with the gray. So this person says, I like to compare blockchain to say uh, how we as the human race store history. Bitcoin is using proof of work as a mechanism to write data on a ledger so we can achieve consensus. History is using proof of power as winners uh, or who is in power today, where the winners write the history. You know, we have cave paintings, we use books. In the last 20 years, we could use the internet, but every of these could be modified. That's all this stuff, we could be modified. If you have enough winning power, rewriting history is also possible as you can destroy sources or modify facts. Blockchain is a better way uh, how human race can store our information as you just can't modify the past. This person needed to check his work. Our past is very valuable as we need to remember our mistakes as we can't just pass information like Hitler's idea was not good <laughs> by DNA. Um, okay, so this is interesting stuff, and this is actually something John McAfee talked about. And John McAfee said that the ultimate use case for crypto is elections on blockchain. Zero percent chance of fraud during an election. And he also said, to go along with this, history on blockchain. So no longer will the winning side of a war or the controlling power be able to write their own history. That's, that's amazing, and I think there's a definite need for that, right? A lot of fake news coming out. A lot of fake news. Okay, so I want to finish up with uh, the gray here because I actually want to dive a bit on this. So uh, this person says it's digital cash, basically. The value is digital cash. That's what Satoshi's white paper says, and it explains it pretty well in two words. It's digital, so nobody can physically take it away from you, like nobody can take away your favorite song on your phone. Uh, it's cash. You can, in theory, pay with, save it, lend it, but nobody can print more and devaluate it and devaluate the dollar. To go along with this, cryptocurrency provides a safeguard against a corrupt government or failing economy uh, in many first world countries and otherwise. And you have the full control of your money. Nobody can freeze your bank account. Nobody can devaluate it by printing more. It's your money and nobody, no bank or government can take it away from you not even when you cross borders. It might not seem like you need it until you actually need it. Banks are evil. <laughs> and I think, uh, so let's talk about that. I think Roger Ver said it best. Uh, he said that, he said a lot of people ask me, hey, aren't governments going to regulate Bitcoin? And that's really the wrong question to ask because Bitcoin, if everything goes right, is going to regulate the governments because in many ways, governments have too much power. I mean, do governments really need to control our money? That's what they do now. But uh, like for instance, in the US, the government slash Fed, they can print money as much as they want, any time they want, for any reason they want, and you better believe they're doing that all the time. And uh, if you're using Bitcoin, and if cryptocurrency gains adoption, that sort of thing can't happen. So I've talked about this before, but let's reiterate this, because Think about it this way. Now we're going to get a little bit heavy. Uh, there's this economic concept called bracket creep. And we're talking about tax brackets here. So bracket creep is basically the idea that the government inflates the currency 
by a little bit every single year. You know, inflation occurs at maybe one or two or three percent, and one year to the next, that's no big deal, right? But compound that year after year after year, and then pretty soon in 10 to 20 years, you know, before you know it, a $100,000 income isn't going to be that big of a yearly income. But the government's tax brackets are going to be the same. So uh, $100,000 income in the future, uh, after however many years inflation compounds, is maybe only really going to be worth as much as a $50,000 income today. So in the future, you are going to be in a significantly higher tax bracket because of this inflation, because of bracket creep, but you aren't actually earning any more. And that's an example of how power needs to be taken away from the government. And up until now, you know, we need the government to issue our money. How else are we going to get by as a nation? But now with new things like blockchain and crypto, suddenly we have a better option. So Bitcoin is the solution to this. Unlike the US dollar, with Bitcoin, there's no central authority. You cannot print any more Bitcoins. That's a really powerful way for people to opt out of this government inflation racket uh, that they use to bump everybody up into higher tax brackets year after year. Whew. So like I said, I'm going to leave a link to this Reddit post in the comments. There's a lot more stuff that you can talk about. I just chose some of my favorites. Uh, if you found value in this video today, give the video a like. Uh, helps us grow as a channel. I mean, honestly, we're still a small channel, but if you just like the video, it would really help us out. That's We don't ask for tips. We don't ask for anything like that. Happy to make the videos. Um, and that's it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be a part of a team, if you want to be a part of our daily crypto community. All right. See you tomorrow.